Okay, so welcome back. Now today we're going to start taking a look at putting together a very simple system that will monitor and calculate the RMS voltage, the root mean square voltage that appears at your wall outlet. And we're going to be able to monitor that and calculate it and log it over minutes or hours or days and so we'll give us a long-term view of what happens actually to the voltage at your wall outlet. Now, as you probably know, here in the U.S., the uh, voltage at the wall outlet is somewhere around 120 volts RMS. And in other parts of the world, it's around 240. Um, what this is going to do is it's going to take the, um, the sine wave that appears at your wall outlet and it's going to calculate the RMS and send it out through an Arduino, which is right here, and it's going to go to your computer and you can log it and make CSV files and plot it and do whatever you want. So what we're going to come up with is a system that gives us something like this. Now, um, this is uh, Excel. We're doing data streaming and you can stream in the data coming from the Arduino and it automatically reads it in and plots it. You don't have to use this. Uh, this is just one example of what you can do. And you can see over here, uh, we've got the real-time data readings um, from our Arduino. And um, it's giving us one-second updates, and it's automatically plotting. You can see we had a dip in voltage. This is the RMS from the wall outlet. And you can also see over here where we've got the actual reading in RMS from a uh, multimeter connected to the uh, wall outlet. And you can see that that is pretty well in agreement. It's about 118. Uh, they both agree, give or take, you know, a few tenths of a, a volt. So um, again, you can calibrate this to get it even closer. But um, you can see here we've got a nice interesting chart. Uh, what this will ultimately do is make a CSV file with all these, all this data, and you can plot it however you want. And you can see up in the top right, I've automatically calculated the minimum and maximum voltages in this range. And this is about eight minutes worth of data. And I've calculated the min and max, and the difference is, in this case, about 2.7 uh, volts. So I'm about 117 to 119. Okay, so why do we want to look at the voltage at the wall outlet? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Um, the most important one is it's good to know what the facts are and what the data shows rather than to just rely on stuff you see posted on the internet or, or use your intuition. Um, it's really good to actually look at the numbers. And this is one of those areas where it takes a little bit of effort to figure out the real answer. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of people go for the quick, easy solution and don't actually look at the numbers. So what we're going to do is look at the actual numbers and see what the values actually are. Now, um, the other thing we want to do is, like good engineers, we want to step back and figure out what the problem is. Figure out what we have to do to find the answer uh, and kind of design it rather than just jump in and start hooking up wires. So, um, first of all, what should we expect the, the voltage at the wall outlet to be? Well, if you look at some of the standards in the U.S., you can see that there are some uh, requirements and recommendations for voltage at the wall outlet and voltage delivered from the power company to your house. And in yellow, this shows kind of a, a general range that some of the standards um, use. So for a, a 120 volt nominal RMS supply, keep in mind it's coming from the power company to your house. And there are two ranges that they specify. One is the service, which is coming from the power company. And they're saying it should be in general plus or minus 5% from 120, which means a low of about 114 and a high of 126. Now there's another range that's even wider and that addresses what the voltage is going to be inside your house or your business. And there's a reason for that. And it's because if you've got 114 to 126 delivered to the house, as you get uh, current flowing through the wires in your house, it's going to cause voltage drops 
in addition to that. So that's called a utilization. So there's service and utilization. Service is what comes up to your house from the power company. Utilization is what should be expected inside your house at the wall outlets. So they're saying in general, something like 104 to 127, minus 13% plus 6%. So that's kind of a general range that you should expect at your wall outlet, 104 to 127. Um, now just keep in mind that these are normal values. If, if you've ever been through a lightning storm, you know that that can go down to zero, right? I mean, you can have no power, um, depending on what's going on with the power company, or maybe they've got some problems. It can go outside that range, but it's not supposed to go outside that range for a long period of time. And it gets kind of um, fuzzy what you're actually going to get. So these are kind of general limits. But again, if, if bad stuff happens, it can go outside these limits. So one of the reasons why we're doing this is to see in a normal day or a normal week, how much does it go outside those limits, if anything. So here is kind of a general um, picture of what I was talking about, where coming from the pole from the power company into your house, uh, at the point that it comes into your house, probably around 114 to 126 is reasonable. And then as it goes through your circuit breaker panel and goes out to your circuits in your house, they're saying it should be 104 to 127. Of course, you've got a microwave, maybe a 1200 watt microwave, you've got air conditioner, computer, um, washer and dryer, you've got all these components that as they draw current, it's going to cause um, additional drops in your uh, voltage inside your house. But it, again, it should be 104 to 127. Now, for example, um, if you look at the wiring in your house, generally it's going to have a resistance of somewhere around half an ohm for every 50 feet. And that's just a ballpark. It depends on the wiring and the age of the house and everything else. But that's kind of a general assumption. Half an ohm for 50 feet. And say if you've got 50 feet of wire going to your microwave, then you're going to expect half an ohm of resistance, something like that. And if it's a 1200 watt microwave, you might get, you know, 10 amps flowing at 120 volts. So 10 amps times half an ohm, that's five volts. So that's going to bring you down to about 115 volts RMS. So a five volt drop. And if you get bigger equipment, it's going to be more. So let's briefly take a look at what RMS is. I mean, we talk about RMS, but what does that actually mean? Well, here is a picture of a sine wave, and you can see in this case, it goes from zero up to one, back to zero, down to minus one. It's going plus and minus around zero. Well, a lot of times we don't really care about this wiggly part. We just want to know what the impact of this sine wave is on, say, equipment. So whether it's going plus or minus doesn't really matter to equipment. If you have current that's flowing, whether it's going in one direction or the other doesn't really matter to equipment. It's still going to heat it up. So one of the reasons we want to get rid of this plus and minus is we want to make it more look like DC or direct current, which is a constant value, so that we can compare the two and see what, for example, the relative heating what the impact is on equipment. So we want to get rid of this plus and minus and make it more like DC. So that's what RMS does. Well, how does it do that? Well, RMS stands for the square root of the average of the squared wave. So we're doing three calculations on this wave to get basically an equivalent to DC. So the first thing we're doing is we are squaring each value of this wave to get a squared wave. So what does that look like? Well, let me unhide this and let me rehide these guys. And here in green, I think it's green or orange, I've got the result of squaring each value of this sine wave. This is a squared wave, okay? So I've taken each value of this sine wave in this B column, and I have multiplied it times itself to get this. So all the, the minus ones squared by, the, by itself 
gives you a plus one. So it it basically flips this over so it's all positive going. So you can see how we're starting to get to the point where it's all positive going, kind of like DC. So we've done the first thing. We squared the wave. Now we need to take the average of all of those values, okay? So let's take the average of all those values. I'm going to unhide, and then I'll hide this. And here is what I get when I take the average of all the values in this column, all right? And if you look at this squared wave, you can see it goes from 0 to 1 to 0 to 1. And you can intuitively see, well, the average of a 0 to 1 is like in the middle, it's a 0 0.5. And the result is true, it's 0 0.5. So the average of the squared wave is one value. It's 0 0.5. So you square the wave, you take the average, and you come up with one number. And then the last thing you get to do is take the square root of that. So let's unhide the next one. And here is a line showing the RMS, or the root of the average of the squared wave, the equivalent DC of this sine wave. We squared it, we took the average, and then we took the square root. And it should be 0 0.707. It's not quite exact, but 0 0.707 times this 1 gives you the RMS for a sine wave. So that's what RMS is. You're basically doing three calculations on a wave, and normally you will just do it for one period, one cycle of the wave, because this can vary, you know, if the sine wave changes magnitude or whatever. Um, but here we did it on three cycles. But I, hopefully you, now you get the idea of what RMS is. It's just three calculations on a sine wave to give us kind of an equivalent DC. Okay, so now the challenge is we know what this 120 volt AC, it's kind of an equivalent DC, and uh, the actual peak sine wave is going to be more than that, this, because this is the root of the mean of the square. Um, so we, we know that this is an RMS value. So how are we going to calculate this? We're going to take a, a sine wave from the wall outlet. We're going to have to do those calculations on that sine wave. And somehow we want to bring it into an Arduino so we can hook it up to our computer and um, log it over a long period of time. So we got this high voltage, 120 volts AC, and we got to bring it into the Arduino. So here's what this uh, voltage coming out of the wall outlet is going to look like. It's going to go 0 to plus 170 to 0 to minus 170 because the RMS of 170 is 120. So somehow we got to convert that very high voltage into a 0 to 5 volts, which is the limits of an analog input to an Arduino. So how do we, how do we go through and convert 170 volts plus and minus to only a plus going from 0 to 5 volts? That's the challenge. Thankfully, there's a number of solutions. Um, this is the one we're going to use. It is a device that will take up to 250 volts AC coming in to these pins. And it's got a transformer in here and some circuitry that will convert the output to these pins to between 5 and 30 volts. And it will give you the varying voltage so you can do the RMS calculations, but it will offset that sine wave so you don't go negative. And we, we said before, the Arduino doesn't like negative voltages, so this is great because it offsets it. So all you get is positive voltages, and you can, you can get an output of between 5 and 30 volts that's offset. And uh, we're going to use something like 5 volts. We're not going to use 30 volts, but you can see we're going to get something that will give us something we can bring into the Arduino. What we're going to need for the Arduino is something that looks like this. If we're going to calculate RMS, we're going to need something like this that replicates the incoming waveform, but it only goes from 0 to 5 volts, and it's offset by something like half of that, maybe 2.5 volts, so we can operate on this in the Arduino. So what is the Arduino's task? Well, it's got to take that and it's got to figure out the RMS, which means 
it's got to get rid of this offset internally. So it's got to take all the numbers that uh, are coming in, all of the samples that are coming into the A0 and remove that offset. And it's going to be something around half of this five volts. So we're effectively going to be subtracting two and a half from each of the values of this incoming sine wave. And that will give it uh, values that are around zero, okay? Now we're not getting z we're not getting negative numbers coming into the analog. These are just calculations uh, internal to the Arduino. So we basically remove the offset. We bring this back down from zero to five. Then we have to do the first thing, which is square the wave, multiply each value times itself to get a squared wave. So we've got the square. We then take the the mean or the average and then take the square root of that like we did before. So you can see pretty straightforward calculations needed in the Arduino. You basically figure out what this offset or this average value is coming in, subtract that from all of the um, readings, then take the square of all of those and then take the average and the square root of that final number and you're all set to go. So here's the device we're going to use uh, on Amazon. Um, you can see it's about, in US, it's about $11. I think I paid a little bit more than half of that. A um, bunch of different sellers have the same device. And you can see it's called a ZMPT-101B. I think that's the transformer itself, uh, but it's commonly referred to by the transformer name, I believe. So uh, fairly inexpensive device. Um, keep in mind that these are not rated devices. You're going to be hooking 120 volts or even uh, 240 if you're in another country. Be very, very careful. I wouldn't do this at all. If you uh, are not familiar with how to work with high voltages, you can, you can get hurt or killed if you um, do this wrong. So don't do this um, if you uh, are not qualified, you don't know what you're doing. But anyway, this is the device. The nice thing is it has a uh, library in uh, the Arduino libraries designed for this device. Uh, unfortunately, the library, personally, I found it to have a couple of issues I had to modify. But anyway, it's um, pretty much all ready to go. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to start to look at how we can wire these devices up to give us something like this, where we've got the streaming data coming into Excel or whatever program we want, you want to use, and we can chart it over a long period of time. And we're going to talk about some challenges we have in getting these um, devices set up and calibrated that you may not be aware of. Um, for example, the, the five volts, um, I've found that we need a little bit more than five volts to get this thing working right and also some challenges in using this uh, potentiometer to calibrate. Um, so I encourage you uh, hang around for the next set of uh, videos where we talk about how to get this working. Anyway, I hope this helps. Take care and have a really good day. Thanks.